Good evening, Facebook friends and YouTube followers. This is Richard again, back for your fourth and final video blog of the day for Monday, November 3rd, 2014. Around 8.18 p.m. in Berwick, Massachusetts. It's dark out now. And it's going to be freezing tonight, but we're bounding quickly into the 50s and 60s the next couple of days. Some news to report. It's Happy National Sandwich Day. And 58 years ago today was the first time that the classic 1939 movie, The Wizard of Oz, made its date up. Uh, appearance on CBS television. CBS television carried the movie The Wizard of Oz at least once a year for the next 40 years. It was kind of a tradition. It was highly rated and stuff on CBS. Now you don't see it on CBS anymore. You see it on like TNT or TBS maybe once or twice a year. And that's about it on that. My fourth and final video blog subject of the night is my personality profile. My personality profile tonight is about the late great professional wrestler, El Gigante, also known as Giant Gonzalez. El Gigante, Giant Gonzalez, had a short career in the world of professional wrestling. People were calling him the second coming of Andre the Giant because he legitimately was a giant. He legitimately was seven foot seven, he was well over 400 pounds, but he was not a great worker horrible worker. He had serious health problems and he had he only wrestled about five, six years and stuff. El Gigante was born as George Gonzalez in Argentina and his height was so big he suffered for, from the same thing, gigant gigantism, what what Andre the Giant and the Big Show suffered from. And he was a very good basketball player. George Gonzalez. In fact, he was on the Argentina national team for a center and stuff. He was a pretty good player. So good, in fact, in 1988, he was drafted by the Atlanta Hawks of the National Basketball Association in the third round. But he had very weak knees and stuff, and he did not play in the NBA. But the owner of the Atlanta Hawks at the time, Ted Turner, owned WCW and with George Gonzalez's height he thought George would make it as a professional wrestler he trained in the WCW power plant for one year and then in, in, in 1990 George made his professional wrestling debut as El Gigante. El Gigante was a, a very people were saying he was the next Andre the Giant because he was a very tall man and stuff. He he made his debut on Capital Combat 1990, helping Steen out from being attacked by the Four Horsemen. And that's the infamous Robocop appearance for WCW, but then we don't want to talk about that. El Gigante was basically in the first six, seven months of his professional wrestling career, limited to six-man tag team matches, and battle royals. He won battle royals easily because nobody could throw him out and stuff like that. And people were calling him, the experts were calling him the next Andre the Giant. But like on but unlike Andre, when Andre was younger, Andre would do drop kicks and monkey flips or amazing moves. Andre even came off the top rope when he was younger. El Gigante was very limited what he could do. He was basically immobile because he was seven foot seven. Basically his moves were like punches, kick it, kicks, the choke hold, the claw. Very limited stuff. And a lot of like WCW stars did not want to even wrestle him <laughs> because he was so big and he was kind of very, you know, dang not dangerous. They were afraid they, they would get seriously injured him by him because of his size and stuff. <laughs> And early in 1991, El Gigante was placed in a feud with Nature Boy Ric Flair over the NW, the WCW World Tag Team Champion um, World Championship. And El Gigante interview skills were limited because first he didn't speak too much English, and sometimes when he was out on the road, 
he needed to use somewhat of an interpreter like David Sierra and Bill Alfonso. But when they did, when Jim Ross did an interview with Ellie Conte one time about like a feud with Nate, Nature Boy Ric Flair, why are you here for? I want the belt. And then he says to Flair, I want your belt. That's not a good interview skills at all, my friends. And Ali Gante faced off against Nature Boy Ric Flair in several house shows throughout the WCW territory. Flair won by disqualification because Ali Gante was choking Flair or refused to give up a submission hold and stuff like that. And, you know, he was very limited at what he could do. Ali Gante, thank God he didn't win the WCW World Championship because if he did, that probably would, would, would like, bankrupt the whole company because Ali Gante is, a, is kind of a wrestler who would have been like an attraction like Andre, but putting him in a program with Nature Wave Ric Flair as basically a lucky wasn't good at all. Then Ali Gante feuded with Sid Vicious. One time Sid almost got Ali Gante in a power, almost gave him the power bomb in a tag team match. And then they had a match a match, a stretcher match at the first Super Bowl pay-per-view in WCW at the in the Bayfront Center in St. Petersburg, Florida. Aligante won that easily because Sid gave his notice to go to the WWE to become Sid Justice. And later on, Aligante feuded with the one-man game and on one edition of WCW Saturday Night. Um, the one man gain attacked him and his manager at the time, Kevin Sullivan, cut Eligante's hair. This was like shades of years ago when Big John said and Ken Patella cut Andre the Giant's hair on television, which, you know, Vince McMahon says it was one of the most despicable displays of conduct in the history of the WWE. This, like, this hair cutting was maybe despicable, but it wasn't as... It wasn't the most despicable conduct of action in WCW history and stuff. And then Aligante feuds with One Man Gain throughout the country and stuff like that. Aligante gets, gets his revenge and stuff. Then Aligante was slated to have a feud with Vader in WCW. They had a few matches in like New Japan, like... Vader attacked him and used that the Vader his head set that came in with smoking skull and stuff like that, but the feud was never the feud never kicked off in WCW because Aligante left WCW, and then there was rumors he was coming to WWE as the son of Andre the Giant, but that didn't happen. But Aligante definitely came to the WWE in Royal Rumble 1993 as Giant Gonzalez, who was standing nearly eight feet tall and his manager was Harvey Whippleman. Giant Gonzalez interfered in the Royal Rumble. He, his main focus was targeting The Undertaker and in the Royal Rumble match, Giant Gonzalez enters the arena. He was not in the Royal Rumble. He froze The Undertaker out, eliminating him. And then he beats the pulp out of the Undertaker and stuff like that. Giant Gonzalez came with like wore a body suit and stuff like that. And the same thing in WCW. He basically only had a couple of moves. The choke slam and like kicks and punches and stuff. Wrestled several preliminary matches in WWE and he would want win decisively and stuff like that. He faced The Undertaker at WrestleMania 9. The Undertaker won by DQ because he used chloroform on The Undertaker, knocked The Undertaker out, and then The Undertaker was carried off on a stretcher. But a few minutes later, The Undertaker comes back in and, and like, looks at Giant Gonzalez and stuff. Then Giant Gonzalez and The Undertaker have a feud at how it shows The Undertaker was by disqualification because Giant Gonzalez choke hold and stuff like that. Giant Gonzalez had a, like a television match with Tatanka for a spot in the King of the Rain and Tatanka won by the EQ because the Giant Gonzalez choked 
him and he wouldn't let go and stuff like that and basically immobile with the giant Gonzalez and stuff and then the giant Gonzalez and Undertaker have a match at SummerSlam 93 it was a rest in peace match and the Undertaker beat giant Gonzalez when Undertaker came off the top rope and beat him one, two, three, and afterwards, Giant Gonzalez dumped Harvey Whipperman as his manager, and Giant Gonzalez was later to feud with Adam Baum, who was Harvey Whipperman's new, new charge, but Giant Gonzalez's contract with the WWE ended in October 1993, and he left the WWE. He wrestled some, some place some in Japan until 1995, where his where he couldn't wrestle anymore because of serious health problems. He had diabetes, he had heart problems and stuff. Giant Gonzalez was actually in some movies and television shows. He made an appearance in Baywatch in 1993. He made a appearance in two episodes of Thunder in Paradise. And also he was in a uh, TV movie Hercules and stuff like that. But Giant Gonzalez invest his money very wisely and he retired to a ranch in Argentina his homeland but you know he's was so big and health problems continued on towards the end of his life Giants Gonzalez was was confined to a wheelchair and he passed away in September 2010 at the age of 44 a lot of the wrestlers said Giant Gonzalez was one of the nicest individuals of all time and stuff like that but as a work in the ring he was absolutely horrible and people should have never compare him to the second coming of Andre the Giant because of his like lack of skills he was very immobile and stuff and he only had two moves the chokehold the claw and a few others it's very disappointing though for Giant for El Gigante Giant Gonzalez because if he had, if he didn't have any health problems, he probably would have been a, maybe a decent wrestler. He could have been the second coming of Andre the Giant. Maybe he could have gotten a run as the WCW World Champion or WWE World Champion because he had that potential. But health problems and being not a great worker killed his chances for stardom in the in professional wrestling. And that's about it on that. I'll be back tomorrow, Facebook friends and YouTube followers, for three more video blogs. One of them I'm confirming tomorrow is the top 10 worst Major League Baseball stadiums of all time. And the other two, if you're my Facebook friends, and friends, you, I'll tell you what they are. And don't get, don't forget, people in the United States tomorrow who are, who are listening to this, it's election day. Go out and vote. Yeah. Vote matters. I'm going to vote tomorrow. I'm going to vote before going to work. The governorship is up on the line. One U.S. Senate seat and a representative seat in in Massachusetts plus four ballot questions. I know who I'm voting for. I'm not going to tell you. And I'm, I'm also going to vote for the questions. One, no. Two, no. Three, no. Four, yes. See you later, Facebook friends and YouTube followers. Good night, everybody. See you tomorrow.